today our 25th lecture will be continuing with the active filters. In the last lecture we had already discussed how uh, passive RLC filters can be converted to active filters by inductor simulation techniques. Inductor simulation we had discussed uh, non-ideal inductor with series resistance, with parallel resistance, without any resistance okay all these cases. And uh, that circuit is known as gyrator uh, that can convert the capacitor terminated into an inductor that is a gyration means rotation by 180 degrees between voltage and current. To convert RLC filter to active filters this inductor can be therefore used. Active and passive parameter sensitivity is now coming into picture. Out of this active parameter is an important criteria for selection of the filter topology. Effect of finite gain and gain finite gain bandwidth product uh, how this affects the inductor that is simulated using an active device is also discussed. Uh, earlier. Now from that a criteria for design of a filter arose wherein the F0 of the filter into Q, F0 is the normalizing frequency should be much less than the gain bandwidth product of the active device. This is what we had shown in the last class. Today uh, anyway, we will uh, continue after uh, we indicate the Q of the inductor simulated is dependent upon the DC gain A0 of the op amp and GB of the op amp in this fashion. So, A0 is the Q of the inductor if GB is infinity and if A0 and GB both are finite then that is the variation in Q. It appears as a negative resistance uh, uh, of magnitude GB by 2 omega naught shunting the inductor whereas due to finite gain A naught it appears as a positive resistance which is A naught into R. Negative resistance is GB into R by 2 omega naught. Q of the filter simulated using such an inductor is going to be QA whatever you have designed it for divided by 1 plus q a by a naught minus 2 omega naught q a by g b. So, this is the limitation of the inductor simulation circuit. The quality factor q now how to enhance it in another fashion that is what is normally adopted in what are called as salinated key networks. The q enhancement takes place due to uh, feedback negative or positive. The quality factor QP of the second order passive RC filter since it is always less than 0.5 it is unacceptable for a general filter design. So, Salen key proposed use of negative or positive feedback to uh, enhance the Q. Several topologies similar to Salen key filters are possible these are going to be now synthesized systematically by us. <coughs> Second order passive filter let us represent this by a polynomial numerator divided by denominator. This is the way the passive filter is represented numerator by denominator. Let us say it is a second order filter okay. then ds is primarily uh, normalized S squared by omega naught squared plus S by omega naught Q this we have been adopting from the beginning this is the way we have normalized the constant is made equal to 1 and then this is the normalizing frequency omega naught this is the Q of the filter. So, if, if it is passive let us therefore term it as passive and Q P is less than 0.5 that is the characteristic of the filter and omega p is equal to 1 by R c. Now, such a 
numerator polynomial by denominator polynomial is embedded in an inverting amplifier topology like this. So, that there is a loop feedback loop which is negative because of this inversion here and summation here it is a negative feedback loop. So, V naught by V i now becomes converted ok this we had shown earlier equal to minus k into n s by d s divided by 1 plus k n s by d s which is minus k n s the numerator polynomial remains the same as before ok except for multiplication by minus k denominator polynomial gets modified as this d s plus k n s this is the technique that is adopted to change the characteristic polynomial of this network ok which is embedded in an amplifier like this. So, what happens for a general second order passive RCRL filter if you write N s by D s as the denominator being the standard form that we had used earlier. So, numerator on the other hand is again normalized uh, uh, with the same uh, normalizing frequency as denominator. So, it is therefore a yum integer s squared by omega p, p squared plus n integer positive or negative s by omega p plus p uh, positive or negative ok integer. So, omega p is the natural frequency of the passive RC filter q p is the quality factor of the passive second order RC filter. So, in such a situation V naught over V i gets transformed as numerator polynomial remains the same as before denominator gets modified as 1 plus m k 1 plus n k q p plus 1 plus p k. So, what happens now omega naught the natural frequency is nothing but this this if you consider as a b and c root a c by b is the q ok and root c by a is the natural frequency. If you do that it is square root of 1 plus p k divided by 1 plus m k into omega p that is the modified uh, natural frequency of the system feedback system. Q also gets modified as q p divided by 1 plus n k q p square root of 1 plus p k square root of 1 plus m k. This is an important transformation that we are looking for. So, this is what we are seeking this is the consequence of what we are doing right. So, in case we want to improve the q from the original q p which is less than 0.5 we have different uh, methods possible p k can be positive m k can be positive ok. m k into q p can be a negative quantity less than 1. So, these are the possibilities of improving the quality factor. So, p k being positive m equal to 0 n equal to 0 is first considered ok that is the low pass original passive filter then p 0 m k positive n 0 that is uh, the high pass filter as the starting point in the passive block then p and m 0 ok being uh, n k being negative ok such that n k into q p is less than 1 is positive feedback ok situation. So, these are the possibilities that are going to be discussed one after the other then when both p and m are present and n is 0 that is the notch filter situation ok that also is going to be discussed ok. Finally, we are going to have p and m equal to 0 and n k q p uh, negative, but less than 1 that is the positive feedback structure. So, these four topologies for enhancing the q will be discussed in the course of these lectures. Enhancement of q a can be therefore, carried out by using any one of these combinations that I have already mentioned about. So, let us start with the low pass RC filter. So, this 
transfer function we have written it so many times 1 by 1 plus s c 1 r 1 plus s c 2 r 1 plus r 2 that is the coefficient of s. s squared means 2 capacitors coming s c 1 r 1 s c 2 r 2. So, that is the transfer function. Omega p is recognized as 1 by circuit of r 1 c 1 r 2 c 2 and q p is this and r 1 equal to r 2 equal to r c 1 equal to c 2 equal to c omega p is 1 by r c q p is 1 by 3 this is a simple design procedure. Active low pass filter okay, how to convert this. So, this m uh, network with this value of r and c is embedded in this inverting amplifier with gain k. The natural frequency of the active filter is now omega naught equal to square root of 1 plus k uh, okay, into omega p root c by a. So, and q a is equal to q p divided by square root of 1 plus k. So, this uh, square uh, q p into square root of 1 plus k. So, both omega naught and q a get enhanced by a factor of the original uh, frequency and q by a factor of 1 plus root of 1 plus k. By suitable selection of k we can de design it for a specific q and thereafter fix the time constant omega p which is 1 over r c based on what omega naught we desire for the low pass filter. The structure of the active low pass filter now is that we want to add v i in such a manner that this transfer function remains the same as what we have just derived. Okay. So, for that we add v i along with the feedback voltage in this following manner by using an adder network which is passive here. So, I make this r 1 split into 2 r 1 and 2 r 1. So, the Thevenin's resistance is still r 1 but it has a voltage which is getting added which is 2 v naught plus I mean 2 v naught okay, with the Thevenin's resistance of r naught 2 v naught into half which is v naught itself okay, and v i into half. Okay. That means, instead of gain of k we should use in order to fulfill the same uh, feedback we have to double the gain as 2 k. So, if that is done, that is done actually by using a network like this now along with addition that we have just now mentioned. So, a voltage control voltage source with gain 2 k inverting amplifier gain of 2 k is used in the following manner buffer followed by a inverting amplifier. So, this achieves the transfer function that we have earlier depicted. So, let us design a second order Butterworth low pass filter bandwidth equal to 40 hertz q a is 1 over root 2 for the second order Butterworth r 1 equal to r 2 equal to r c 1 equal to c 2 equal to c q p is equal to 1 by root 3 uh, 1 by uh, 3 uh, and therefore q a is equal to 1 by 3 into root of 1 plus k equal to 1 over root 2 which gives k value of 3.5 that is the k. Omega naught can be evaluated uh, 2 pi into 40 is equal to root of 4.5 divided by r c. So, r c comes out as 84 nanofarads for an r of 100 k that is the design so uh, so that can be simulated by putting those values in the circuit shown earlier in this circuit and that is simulated and you can see the uh, cutoff frequency is very nearly what we have designed obviously right it is uh, 40 hertz okay at the point 0.7 point this very nearly equal to 1 actually it is k by 1 plus k less than 1 that is what you see here k being uh, equal to 3.5 k by 1 by 1 plus k is the numerator gain. So, if k is high it goes to 
collinearly equal to 1. This is indicating that the q is uh, 1 over root 2 just suggesting a small hump there. Now let us enhance the q, q is equal to 5 and f naught is same 40 hertz, r is equal to 100 k, c is equal to 0 0.6 microfarad in order to bring the f naught to 40 hertz c has to be enhanced to 0.6 microfarad. k is 224 now because q has been enhanced right. So, root k plus 1 by 3 is equal to 5. So, root of k plus 1 is equal to 15 k plus 1 is 225. So, k is 224 and knowing this value of root of k plus 1, root of k plus 1 that is 15 divided by rc 2 pi rc is made equal to 40 hertz. From which you get the value of c for an r of 100 k which is equal to 0 0.6 microfarad that is how you get the thing and we see that the uh, frequency is 39.405 it is slightly reduced we will see the effect of uh, the active device okay gain is to reduce the frequency of uh, normalization to the from the 40 to 39.405 very nearly same however q has been enhanced considerably it has changed to very nearly 5.5 so, this we have to reason out why it is getting enhanced from the design value of 5. So, this is due to the gain bandwidth product. We will see this later qualitatively. Right? Q equal to 5, F naught is increased now. F naught is increased from 40 hertz to 400 hertz with a C of 60 nanofarads. Now, you can see that this is very nearly 391 hertz, but the Q is nowhere near what we have designed it. It is 5 that we have designed it for, but it is 36.555 in simulation. So, let us investigate why the Q is changing as the frequency is increased, Q is in increasing okay, from the design value of 5 and that is the transient response. Actually Q of 5 means there should have been only 5 peaks and we see now very nearly uh, 37, 40 peaks in the whole transient response of this for the same circuit. Okay. So, what is it due to? Let us just Therefore, increase the frequency from 400 hertz to 600 hertz by using capacitance equal to 40 nanofarads. Q is still the same, 5. What happens? It does not need any input, it is just going into exponentially increasing oscillation at the natural frequency of 600 hertz. Right? So, it is only limited in amplitude by the supply voltage which is nearly 15 volts for this 741. So, this is due to this oscillation or instability in the circuit which has been designed as a filter, but it works as an oscillator okay, oscillating at its natural frequency it is due to the finite gain bandwidth product of the op amp. So, Q increases from the specified value these are the effects seen in the experiment that we have carried out the natural frequency reduces slightly from the specified value at higher natural frequencies the transient responses are more oscillatory indicating Q enhancement effect. Beyond a certain natural frequency the system becomes unstable goes into oscillation at the natural frequency. These are the observations that we have made by designing uh, high Q circuits at higher frequencies using the same topology and op amp. Now, that is the effect of gain magnet product that we are going to investigate now 
Amplifier using a buffer and an inverting amplifier of gain K has a transfer function. This we already know. If you are using a buffer, the effect of the uh, finite gain bandwidth product is 1 plus 1 over loop gain of that. So, this uh, is the loop gain GB by S is the loop gain. So, 1 over loop gain is 1 plus S by GB. Similarly, for that of uh, the amplifier inverting amplifier with gain of 2K, the uh, error in phase that is mainly this is the error in phase that is arising 1 plus 1 plus 2K into S by GB that is 1 over loop gain of that inverting amplifier combined together approximated when omega is much less than GB this is 1 minus 2 plus 2K into S by GB. This is the cumulative phase error that is causing a total phase lag in the gain stage that we are using that is responsible for the Q enhancement in the loop okay always you remember that the uh, additional phase lag caused by the finite gain metric product is the one that is causing us the trouble. So, transfer function of the active low pass filter now changes wherever k is there replace that k by k into 1 minus this phase lag. So, 1 minus this phase lag okay, comes in the numerator that is of not serious consequence. However, in the denominator the k changes from k to k into 1 minus 2 into 1 plus k into s by gb and that gives an error coefficient getting subtracted from the already low coefficient of S okay, and that results in modification of the denominator polynomial as S squared by omega naught squared which is the standard way of normalizing with the constant is made now equal to 1 that 1 plus k is going to be dividing throughout. Okay. So, k by 1 plus k here Okay, we get this modified as minus this factor due to the gain bandwidth product gets subtracted. That means the coefficient of S gets reduced, which is going to make the Q go higher. Okay, effectively, therefore, QA due to finite gain bandwidth product is QP into square root of 1 plus K, which is what we normally design it for using this low pass filter feedback. However, it gets enhanced by this factor and this factor can be uh, rewritten as 2k into omega naught into qa by gb. That has to be much less than 1 in order that it has no influence on the designed q. So, this is an important conclusion that we are arriving. Earlier we had seen that inductor simulator it is sufficient if you have omega naught qa by gb much less than 1. Here since we are using an amplifier with gain equal to 2k the phase error has got multiplied by 2k okay, omega naught by gb is the phase error that into q is to be made much less than 1. So, that means 2k for high q because k root k plus 1 by uh, what is that into qp is equal to q actual right. So, k plus 1 is equal to q actual by q p, q p is 1 by 3 actually in this case. So, this k plus 1 is going to be this squared. So, that means k is prior proportional to the actual q squared for high q it is going to be very high. So, the error is going to be considerable this is what is to be borne in mind. In selecting the op amp okay, therefore, 741 is inferior to let us say LF356 or uh, TL082 okay, because there is a tenfold increase in the gain bandwidth product in these two compared to 741. So, if you are designing filters for high frequencies 
it is better to go for TL082 or LF356. Okay. <coughs> QA is equal to 5, F0 equal to 40 hertz, K is equal to 3.5. Okay. QA due to GB is going to be this 5 divided by 1 minus this factor is going to be such that it is almost very nearly equal to uh, point if you calculate it for the concerned frequency F0 is equal to uh, say 40 hertz GB is equal to 1 megahertz that is for 741 and QA is equal to 5 that into 2 and K is 224 right. So, if you calculate that it comes out as 5.55. The actual experiment has shown us this to be you can see this to be 5.481. So, that has got enhanced for the same Q and frequency okay it has got enhanced to 5.481 this is the simulated result and theoretical uh, calculation has shown us that to be uh, very nearly. 5.55 and second example QA is further increased 5 F not equal to 400 hertz K equal to 224 GB is going to be uh, this QP which is 5 by 1 minus 0.894 or so. So, uh, this quantity comes out as in the earlier case it was 5 by 1 minus 0.0894 right. So, which is very nearly this right. So, we have this coming out to be close to 48. Let us see what it is in the simulation. So, in the simulation it is nearly equal to 37 ok. So, all these approximations are valid only when this quantity please remember uh, is very very small compared to 1. When this is coming close to 1 these approximations are not strictly valid ok. So, uh, what is the uh, limitation due to GB on our uh, this thing for inductor simulation circuits it will be 2 F not Q A by GB should be much less than 1 whereas here it is 2k into f0 qa by gb much less than 1 for the filter to be stable in case of filter using feedback. This is the conclusion that we can draw and now let us design a Butterworth low pass filter that is uh, this uh, for of fourth order fourth order Butterworth filter fourth order means it is can be designed by cascading one second order with another second order. What is the logic uh, behind this? This first second order with low Q that is corresponding to 1 by 1.848 is 1 Q1 this is Q1 and it is cascaded to another which has a high Q Q2 is equal to 1 by 0.765. So, this is the peaking that it shows with Q2 equal to 1 by 0.765. So, when you combine this when you multiply this you get this decrease is compensated for exactly by this increase. So, that it becomes exactly flat and of course, beyond a certain point both of them are decreasing. So, this decreases rapidly. So, that is the Butterworth okay, of uh, uh, fourth order okay, which, I, which is actually root of 1 plus x to the power 2 to power uh, 2, uh, 2n that is 8 okay. x is equal to omega by omega naught. Okay. So, this is the Butterworth that has been uh, designed and we are realizing this using the same network 
okay with 741 as the op amp. So, there is a finite gain bandwidth product which is in enhancing the Q okay in this particular case okay the Q enhancement is seen clearly because it is a higher Q circuit. So, we can see that the effect of gain bandwidth product is that this peak is raising more and this is not so much changed this change is only about 1 percent and this change from 1 percent from the theoretical value this change is on the other hand 12.4 percent from the theoretical value. So, there is a peaking on this okay the pass filter. High pass filter design m equal to 1 now this can be actually concluded that whenever we are designing these filters suppose you are designing a higher order uh, low pass filter function which is maximally flat let us see and it has uh, a combination of low pass okay uh, low q filter with high q filters cascaded then this one may be one such thing this it does not get disturbed much, but the higher q things will be peaking more. So, effectively let us say a typical response will be looking like something like this okay, is what is going to appear due to because as you come closer and closer to the passband edge you are having higher and higher frequency filters with higher Q design. So, they are going to peak more due to gain bandwidth product. If we use the same op amp for all the uh, filter blocks of the second order then this is what is going to happen for a response which should have been strictly this okay. So, this we can conclude qualitatively without doing any mathematics because of the effect seen here the Q is going to be enhanced frequency is going to move down slightly. Now, let us go to high pass filter as a means of improving the or enhancing the Q. So, m is equal to 1, n is equal to 0, p is equal to 0. Earlier we had p equal to 1 and m and n equal to 0. So, then v naught over v i in that embedded situation of am inverting amplifier will give you minus k into s squared by omega p squared. The original high pass nature of n s is retained, but the denominator gets modified only this 1 plus k comes for s squared by omega p squared other coefficients remain the same as before. Then omega naught becomes root c by a. So, omega p now uh, uh, omega naught changes to omega p divided by square root of 1 plus k and q obviously okay is equal to q p into square root of 1 plus k because omega p q p okay uh, remains equal to the same here coefficient of s as 1 over omega p q p. So, we get this as q a which is the same as the low pass case enhancement by a factor of root of 1 plus k. However, the natural frequency decreases by a factor of 1 plus k compared to low pass where it increases by square root of 1 plus k. Now, this is the network high pass uh, passive filter network CRCR and active high pass filter conversion minus k with summing, summing using capacitors we can do. So, then we get minus k s square by omega naught square s square by omega naught square plus s by omega naught q plus 1 omega p uh, squared is 1 over this omega naught is this q a is this and q a. So, <coughs> q p into square root of 1 plus k. Required q a is obtained by selecting k as before omega p is determined by this relationship that we had seen here. 
topology of the active high pass filter. Now some can be done by earlier we did using uh, resistors split it into 2R and 2R. So here now we can use the same addition by uh, of input and feedback voltage using C1 by 2 and C1 by 2 capacitors so that the transfer parameters and feedback uh, loop gain remains the same as before okay and uh, V0 over VI remains same as before. If the lower cutoff frequency is selected as 0.4 hertz typically let us see assuming C1, C2 equal to C, R1, R2 equal to R this is typically that of uh, uh, the biomedical designs of low frequencies. QP is equal to 1 by 3 as so QA is equal to 1 over root 2. We are designing for maximally flat response but our filter of high pass okay. K comes out same as 3.5 same as before omega naught now is 2 pi into 0.4 which is 1 by RC into root of 1 plus K. So we get this for R equal to 100 K C comes out as 1.8 microfarads. This is the simulated result. It shows the uh, what is it cutoff frequency exactly at the 0.4 hertz this one. So this is 0.4 hertz. So the design is okay. Now you can convert this topology from 2 op amp to single op amp. Just connect this to this. Only thing is the uh, R2 that earlier has been used is going to be a parallel combination of this with this. That means we can call it R3 parallel R4 okay is made equal to R equal to R1, C1 equal to C2 equal to C then all the design equations and the Q's and these natural frequencies remain the same as before except that we are saving one op amp in the whole thing. <coughs> Q of the uh, is enhanced by a factor of root of 1 plus K. Natural frequency for the low pass is multiplied by root of 1 plus K into OP omega P. Natural frequency of the high pass filter is omega naught equal to omega P divided by root of 1 plus K. So it gets reduced and let us now investigate the effect of high pass filter with F naught equal to 400 hertz Q equal to 5 same 400 hertz for which we have designed our low pass we are designing the high pass now. So that we can compare the effect of Gainman product in these two low pass and high pass case that is the intention Q is also maintained the same as before equal to 5. K becomes the same as before because Q is equal to root of 1 plus K divided uh, in, into QP which is 1 by 3. So we get the same square root of 1 plus k is equal to 15, 15 squared is k plus 1 so k is equal to 224. F0 is equal to 400 hertz R equal to 100 k gives c equal to 265 picofarads. The circuit is ready and you can simulate that. Now see what has happened. The effect of gain by the product is directly seen here. At this increased frequency of 400 hertz we had gone from 0.4 to 400 okay. Uh, large change in the frequency right and the Q also has been increased from 1 over root 2 to 5. So effect of gain metric product is clearly seen. The actually at the in all these cases gain at the uh, resonant frequency is always equal to Q okay. So Q can be directly measured by measuring the gain at the resonant frequency. So for IQ particularly. So this should have been 5 whereas you can see that it is 2.623 that is a huge variation from the expected value of 5 right. Whereas what has happened in the case of low pass let us look back the Q has got 
enhanced considerably okay in the second example this is the same example same frequency same q and same k. So, the q from original 5 had jumped to 48 there were 10 fold increase in q right due to gain moment product here it has got decreased So, we had to see the effect of this. So, it has got decreased from 5 to 2.623 in the case of high pass filter okay working at the same cutoff frequency or nat uh, natural frequency right as the low pass filter okay and the in the low pass filter case it is tenfold increase from 5. Now, let us do the same thing k is replaced by k into 1 minus the total phase shift of the inverting amplifier plus the buffer. So, 2 into 1 plus k into s by g p minus this is what happens and this 1 plus k is getting modified as 1 plus k into 1 minus 2 into 1 plus k s by g p that is the only variation rest of the things remain the same as before. What happens now? this particular thing is having s squared by omega p squared s is going to be replaced by in all these approximations we are investigating at omega naught the natural frequency of the system defect okay. So, this will be minus omega naught squared by omega p squared okay. So, that minus is going to make this error become plus okay. So, this error becomes now s by omega p q p to 1 plus this s is still there right. So, this s squared is replaced by j omega naught squared which is minus omega naught squared. So, minus omega naught squared by omega p squared comes in and you can modify this and you see that this becomes 1 plus 2 k omega naught q a by g b. Note this in the case of low pass filter it was 1 minus it remain minus right because of the change, sign change caused by this this became 1 plus that means instead of uh, lag error it is lead error that is causing this q to decrease q is going to decrease from its original value of q p e okay uh, uh, into uh, square root of 1 plus k okay by a factor of this. So, this is what has happened okay actually speaking this factor is about we have seen okay in the case of this frequency this factor is going to be point eight nine four or so. So, that therefore, is going to change the q from its original 5 to 5 by 1.894 okay which is nearly what you get in practice. So, it is going to be theoretically 2.63 whereas, we have seen that it is about 2.623 which is pretty close approximation that gives you clear idea that q enhancement occurs in the case of uh, low pass filter by q actual divided by 1 minus this same factor which is 1 minus 0 0.894 okay whereas in this case okay it is going to be uh, decreased by one q p into square root of 1 plus k divided by 1.894 which is 2.63. So, in conclusion let us see uh, what are the things that we have learned today. So, <coughs> we have seen that by increasing the uh, constant 
in the denominator or increasing the coefficient of s square by omega p square we can enhance the q by the same factor. So that means if you embed the low pass filter in an amplifier inverting amplifier and add at the input okay, feedback and the input then the Q gets enhanced from the original QP which is if all the resistances are made equal and capacitors are made equal in the RC filter this QP is 1 by 3. So it will be 1 by 3 into square root of 1 plus K, K is the amplifier gain okay, which has been made 2K as far as we are concerned so that the loop uh, amplifier gain is still K. So uh, and then omega uh, naught of the filter is going to be omega P into square root of 1 plus K. So both Q and frequency increase by a factor of 1 plus K in the low pass filter type of feedback negative feedback. In the case of uh, this is for low pass for the high pass filter Q remains same as before QP into root of 1 plus K however omega naught gets decreased by the factor by which Q is increased. And in this particular case GB finite GB is going to enhance Q okay this means Q will be QP into square root of 1 plus K divided by 1 minus okay 2 K F naught by GB into Q actual this is the Q actual active. So that is the enhancement effect whereas in the case of uh, high pass it is going to be 1 plus of not the Q. So however they are both causing the Q2 change due to the finite gain bent product that means it is going to be different from the design value. So you have to select the gain bent product of these op amps such that this factor 2k into f0 into qa by gb is much less than 1. In this case it does not become unstable however in this case it is likely to become unstable if this comes close to 1 okay and therefore it is a precaution that you should take in order to make these circuits work that you should select the gain bandwidth product of the op amp or active device that you are using properly in filter design. Otherwise all these dangers of deviation from the design performance will be the result. Okay. So thank you very much. <coughs>